Future adventures will be replayable and the hit rig issues might finally be getting solved. The next Sea of Thieves podcast is here. Alright, just before we get into all of the news, a few of you may have noticed that the channel hasn't had many uploads on it recently. The reason reason for this, and I'll have a video soon about it and the state of Sea of Thieves, as it has been a huge topic recently, everyone's been talking about it and pretty much every creator in the space has given their opinion on it, so I'm going to be speaking about it as well at some point. But this came out last night, so this is urgent news. Let's start off with the big stuff, adventure changes. The developers have said that going forward after the Legend of Monkey Island when adventures resume again, there's going to be two primary changes being made. The first is that adventures will be replayable. Finally, it's been requested for so long and they're finally making it happen. But the second big change is there's going to be more of a shift into the direction of gameplay being the focus. Previously, the narrative direction has been the main focus for adventures and that's been the main attraction to go do them, your monthly bit of story. But now they're going to be not only focusing on that, but also more sophisticated. I presume they realise that adventures have been lacking in the content department for a while, hence why they're making them replayable, because if they're going to put a load of effort into them, then we don't want that to just go away after two weeks, because that's too many assets on time-limited content. Next up, there have been some huge hit reg updates given. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm a game dev and know everything about hit reg, so I'm going to play the clip of Mike Chapman talking about hit reg, and he goes into detail about how the systems work and what they're doing to improve it, which is a really, really positive thing. Yeah, so I'd obviously, uh, like, I'll start like quite high level. So we've got projectiles in the game that are essentially calculated using time of flight. The projectile is a real thing that moves through um, the the space and then is calculated over a network. With that, there's more value cases, more ways where errors can creep into it the way that uh, different network conditions and just the general reliability of those shots. That's really the root cause of what players understand to be the hit reg issue. So we put a lot of time and focus into beyond just exploring how we can improve the reliability of that, which is a very complex problem. In a network environment, with different hardware across different regions, um, in a fully networked game, it is a challenging problem. But beyond just improving the reliability of that, is there an alternative way to think about first-person projectile combat in Sea of Thieves? And another way that some games use is hit scan, which is essentially, the, really, the bullet is teleporting yeah, like it's not it doesn't it doesn't exist it doesn't have a, a flight time in yeah. the air it's it's instantaneously connecting with the target off the bat it felt like an opportunity to explore with all the real real reliability improvements it could bring our main concern was we believe we can make this feel great but is it right for sea of thieves i think like a big part of the feel of sea of thieves is it's period weaponry you know all, all of your all of your weapons kind of work like a sniper rifle. You get one shot and then you have to reload. Um, so the reliability of that shot is important, but we still want it to feel like a pirate game. So we set out exploring hit scan with the hope that beyond just improving the reliability, which we got to a really good place with, we could make it feel at home in Sea of Thieves and use some visual tricks to bed it into the world so it would still feel like pirate weaponry. So two things happened. We got to a point where we kind of hit a bit of a brick wall with making it feel at home in Sea of Thieves. So it felt okay, but there were still questions around it. While at the same time, we discovered some new leads to improving projectile time of flight, our existing system. So we have paused work on hit scan for the reasons of we just don't feel we can ultimately look ourselves in the eye and go, this feels at home in Sea of Thieves. And we're following up on the leads that we have now, which are really, really promising. We're already making improvements and there's some improvements rolling out later in the year. So on just the time of flight projectile. So we are doubling down back on that and all the reliability leads. So that maintains this sort of feel that everyone sort of knows of Sea of Thieves yeah. combat. Which, which is another kind of factor in this as well, which was hit scan not only would have just maybe not felt at home in Sea of Thieves, it would just, that muscle memory and that feel 
quite a radical thing to change yeah. something as fundamental as the moment to moment combat in the game mm -hmm. so there was that pressure as well it really needed to just feel like such an improvement to the game and it like for some players it may have felt that and i think some players would have questioned it rightfully um so now we're double down we've got a path forward we've 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 proven some stuff out kind of locally we need to then roll that out to a network environment and see to ensure that these leads um, hold weight. But it's looking very, very promising and more improvements rolling out throughout the year. And there we go. It is great to hear them talking about the issue. So hopefully we can now understand it a bit more and know that they are working on it. Now, let's move on. Slight thing that wasn't in the podcast, the Obsidian Banjo, the rare, rare Obsidian item. If you're an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate member, you can claim that as part of your rewards for this month. Sea of Thieves are releasing it for those members, which is a little bit controversial in the community considering it was an extremely rare item only released once, but you can claim it for free, so don't miss out on that. They mentioned it in the podcast on the topic of Season 10 getting delayed, that it's a new system similar to Captaincy, it reaches far and wide and it will be built on in the future. So, this could be really cool, but this could also be a bit of an issue because if it's anything like Captain C, it's not looking like it's going to actually have any substance. Now, hopefully they won't release it as a buggy mess. They did say that they've learned from Captain C and touched heavily on the fact they're going to make sure it's polished. So, that's a plus, but we'll have to wait and see. Season 10 hasn't been announced yet, but... I'm very cautious considering it's a new system because they said they have two approaches when adding content. The first is these new almost systems broadening the experience, but then they also have what the community traditionally knows of just adding new experiences to do in the sandbox, so things like Megalodons and Skeleton Ships, so we'll have to wait and see on this one. They did say that in Season 10 there will be some new UI improvements. In the short term, they're adding trading company UI improvements. Basically, you can glance over all your effectively trophies. But they also have long-term plans to update the entire game's UI. And they also said they want to touch on the front end a little bit as well. Moving on, Flameheart is back. The reason why it's taking so long for us to see, I guess, the consequences of Return of the Damned is they want to do it right. That being said, we are starting to see now in-game that the Burning Blade has returned. And for those of you who are wondering where the hell it's gone, because currently it has disappeared, same with the vault, Mike Chapman replied to a tweet I put out about it, basically saying there's some performance juggling they're doing that affects this, but to confirm the Burning Blade will be there from the July build and the team are working to bring back the vault which is good and the figurehead in Wanda's hideout will also be removed thankfully all community days are now going to be community weekends and they hope the next community weekend is going to involve creators so we'll have to wait and see what that is perhaps more drops over on twitch and finally, they touched on the cheating issue. They said they are working on it, they're always working on it, and they're actively trying to sort it out and combat the problems and exploits that are coming out, which is all good to see. That does just about bring us to the end of the video, though. Let me know what you think of all this down in the comments below, especially the adventure and hit reg stuff. Are you glad to see adventures are being made replayable, or would you rather see them removed and more assets being focused on seasons? Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy them, please do consider leaving a like. It really helps out the channel an absolute ton. And subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest Sea of Thieves news as and when it comes out. And while you're at it, why not hit the bell as well so you never miss a single upload. But anyways, apart from all that, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.